Welcome to this week's Aiding Your Game. The past few sessions we've been working on building an adventure from scratch using random adventure building out of the Dungeon Master's Guide. We're going to continue that process starting with the encounters this week. Let's get into it. And before we go any further, make sure you go down and hit that subscribe button to help us grow. Give us a thumbs up if you enjoy the content. Leave a comment and let us know some of the things you'd love to tackle on this channel. And of course, if you don't mind the notifications, hit that bell so you can see when we post new content. Now, last week we really worked on what our primary villain for this adventure is going to be. We settled on a cult fanatic. We also took down some notes on the cultists since we know they kind of go hand in hand and can use those cultists in at least one of our encounters. Now we're gonna dive in a little bit further. We've gotten the stats for the CR rating, the adventure day. We have a good general idea of how hard each encounter should be based on the multiplier. We're building this encounter for six players of first level. We already did a doodle for a map and based on the roles for the random adventure building that we started with, we have a good idea of what that adventure should contain for an average adventuring day. So we've got bones, we put them together in a skeleton, and we've started putting some flesh on those bones. We're going to continue that process so we can get a cohesive adventure put out. Now the additional videos that follow this will of course just be augmented for more and more detail, putting the bow on, making it pretty, making it palatable to the players. But in this video, we're gonna kinda of finish the adventure building section, and then it's all about presentation. So we know the final villain, the cult fanatic, which will be the hard encounter, is going to be the sixth encounter out of six that the adventurers encounter in this adventure. We've got some stats and we know that depending on how hard of an encounter we want to put in front of our players that we can have five to ten cultists to utilize in one or more encounters. So we've got at least two kind of fleshed down. And looking at our map, we know that we've got six encounters along a little bit varied terrain for the adventurers from their waypoint to their hometown. So that leaves us at least four encounters that we still have to kind of put together and populate on the map where they're going to happen so that we can have a good idea of how the adventure is going to flow. Now, because we want this to be really focused on that cult fanatic being the big villain and that final boss encounter that this adventure is going to present to our players, I want to utilize the cultists in two different facets. And I'm going to use one of those encounters to be easy in one medium. So at one point, the characters will run into five cultists, which will be an easy encounter. And at another point, I want them to run into 10, which will be a medium encounter. So with the cultists and cult fanatic, now we have three out of our six encounters. Now, based on the roles that we conducted, we know that animated objects are going to play a part or traps right before that final battle. So now we know we've got four out of our six encounters. Now, so far we've got four out of six encounters and this is feeling kind of combat heavy unless the PCs try to use talking and persuasion or intimidation skills to address the cultists, which is a great direction to go. They don't need to enter combat at any point in time. Utilizing different skills could be beneficial. So rather than just offering more combat, I think the last two we'll really use for encounters that are more skill devised. Now, what do I mean by that? Let's go right to the map. So I've got all the notes we've been taking on difficulties, CR levels. I've got the villains stats put out and we've got our map. So we know they're going to start at a waypoint. They're going to meet a cult fanatic at their hometown. And prior to that, they are also going to have an encounter with animated objects and traps. So I'm going to start filling out at 
the encounter point six. They're going to encounter Offelheim, who is the villain of this adventure. So Offelheim will be the final encounter. So we've got to fill in everything prior to that. We know the fifth encounter right before Offelheim is going to be animated objects and traps. Those will have be defenses that Offelheim has set up just to prevent any adventurers from getting through. And then we know we want to have an easy and a medium encounter with cultists. Looking at the lay of the land, I think one of the encounters of cultists should happen kind of halfway. So we'll choose number three to have some cultists. And ultimately, this can be where they encounter the ally. Cultists, of course, being fanatical, perhaps they're bringing that ally to be slaved or sacrificed or some type of an item where they can save the ally. And then, of course, the final round of cultists will have be at their first encounter which will be number one. And as I'm thinking of this, I'm thinking about the other NPC, the patron, as well. So I'm thinking to start off the adventure, what if the cultists are actually at the waypoint and interfering with the waypoint on their way? It could be one group who split in half with some of the cultists ahead at encounter point three and the rest of the cultists at counter point one. So that leaves two. Two, I want to have an environmental trap. So that will be quicksand possibly or some type of a swamp hazard. And then number four will be the other trap encounter. That one looks like we've got it plotted towards the hill and river. So I'm going to have to think on that one a little bit, but something where they have to use skills rather than combat to get around it. So maybe there's a mudslide or a bridge washout, something that they have to utilize skills to overcome. I like the thought of a bridge washout they'll have to cross a fast moving river there's no bridge but the cultists are planning to go that way so we'll have to do some more thought on number four that'll be our outlier right now we know it's going to be environmental that'll be the one for the players to creatively do now to fill out the others we know number five is going to be animated objects. And in the monster manual on page 19 and 20 is where we'll find their stats. We're going to take them down just like the others. And I'm going to take down animated armor as well as flying sword because I know from the charts that I put together that I have 300 XP to spend. So that's one challenge one and three challenge rating one quarter for the players to have that level of encounter. So I can have four total pieces at number five. I'm going to copy those down just like I did the cult fanatic as well as the cultists. And here I'm just going to write down at each location, one through six, what they're going to encounter, if those are going to be easy, kind of what I anticipate those to be. So that way I've got a good plan of progression of the encounters. And I've also put down some notes of what I anticipate each of those encounters to encompass. Kind of what's going on and why it becomes an encounter. 
So let's explore each of those one by one. So an encounter one is going to be easy with cultists. So I'm thinking the cultists will be the first thing. It's going to be five cultists that will stat and then allow the DM to arrange that up or down depending on the number of players. But they'll be the initial contact of something going funky and the introduction kind of to the adventure of evil. And in number two, we know it's going to be swampy, it's going to be a trap hazard, and the thought that keeps coming to my mind is the Swamp of Sorrow. So we'll have a medium encounter, so DC-15s or similar to avoid the swamp, and then it'll be up to the players if they're trying to use strength to pull themselves out, or they're being creative using survival skills to avoid whatever the skill they're using to avoid the hazards of the swamp to keep from taking damage and we'll set the damage at a decent level and make it to where it's consistent that they need to act in order to escape the trap and continue on the path but this will be natural hazards not just a combat they'll need to be thinking creatively on skills they can use to avoid the swamp hazards and hopefully not lose our techs. And then encounter three is going to be another medium one with cultists. And this is where we want them to meet the ally. And so this will be ten cultists with the ally and possibly a couple others who will not want to go forward with the ally and the adventurers, but who will want to go back. And the ally will stat out as just a common person, but with some ability to help. So they can rely on the ally to get kind of what's going on, the lay of the land, and some point of assistance further in the adventure. And then the fourth item is going to be more kind of environmental hazards. And I just envision this uh, bridge out and the river has taken over and washed it away. We don't want it to be impossible, but again, they've got to use skills to get across this river and this destroyed bridge to continue on the path. And they may need to rope themselves together and have the most exterior cross or the strongest swimmer cross, whatever they choose to overcome this trap. It's all about using skills rather than combat to overcome this obstacle. And this is another encounter, our fourth encounter in this adventure. So they'll still gain XP from these encounters. And then the animated items, I'm thinking, I keep going back to Thanos' armor as a scarecrow out in a field. So just before the kind of gate of the city, the animated armor and animated swords will be hung out. And I keep thinking this is the captain of the guard's armor. He was slain and the armor and weapons were put there in a show of defiance almost that the cult fanatic has taken over. So it's going to be recognizable that at once it was good, but now it's fallen and evil. And then... Of course, the cult fanatic, as soon as that's over, the cult fanatic is going to attack. And that is going to be kind of the final boss. Now, at this point, they've gone through a lot. The adventurers have gone through a lot. And so the cult fanatic will feel they've got the upper hand, and you should let them have the upper hand. Ultimately, this is the big bad guy of this adventure. However, that doesn't mean it's the end just that it's the end of this adventure. So there should not be anything more than just a hard encounter. And now that we've got all of those kind of laid out, I just put some quick notes in here of how I view the adventure progressing. The PCs save and encounter the cultists who are taking prisoners. The patron hires or begs them for help to save the day. They travel through the treacherous swamps and survive nature. They encounter cultists and save an ally. The ally leads them to the bridge. 
they have to overcome the bridge and then they have to face this menacing armor and weapons that used to be used for good but are now evil just before the villain attacks ultimately the player should save the day after all they are the heroes and that's the end goal so now we've got all of the bones dressed with flesh we know what our encounters are going to be what the overarching story of our adventure is going to be we know why the players are going to the location that the journey will create the adventures for them to experience we have the stats written down for the encounters that they'll be doing so that we're ready to go when they reach each encounter point now we just need to put it together put some notes on there so that we can start getting it in a good format to present to our players and realistically looking at how can we make this be an adventure that's cohesive start to finish and each piece leads into the next now as I mentioned before once we get through this entire process I am going to put this on either RPG drive through or DMs Guild so that you'll be able to download it for free make sure to leave a comment let me know what your thoughts are of this adventure so far what you like what you don't like if you're following along and creating your own some of the changes that you're doing or what are the roles directing you to do where you're using your creativity to do it I did receive one very interesting comment in email about this adventure that we're building and I thought it was fantastic because I hadn't really thought of it this way before but the adventure as it was originally lined out was about the PCs having an adventure on their way home having an old patron who kind of gives them that guidance and gets them on the path of adventure having an ally who is looking for revenge and the cult leader or the humanoid fanatic as the main villain one of the viewers really compared this to the 1980 show Beastmaster and after they mentioned this and I started thinking about it and read through their descriptor they really kind of noted the two and thought them through really well but if you think about the hero of that movie Dar the Beastmaster a lot of his adventure was on his way home even though he didn't know it was his home he had an ally in Kiri who was also kind of seeking revenge there was an older patron who was a previous guard and I thought the kind of parallels to it were great not to mention Mayax in the movie being a cult fanatic so even though we completed this with random roles it really kind of paralleled something that pop culture has already explored just kind of reiterating that sometimes even if we don't mean to we can find cliches to other experiences and formats that we didn't even think of now if your players were to draw those kind of conclusions and ask did you base it off of uh, you can always say no we just did randoms however the similarities are uncanny so it's great but again if you are looking at inspiration or looking for creative ideas that you can pull from don't hesitate to pull from other sources because it's a wealth of information you can find a lot of inspiration and there can be hidden gems that you can change enough of to give it a fresh new breath of life now in the next video what we're going to do is what I call putting the bow on it we're really going to make it pretty and put things together in a way that's going to be great for a format if it were a published adventure or if you want to download it and present it to your players we're going to refine the map we're going to get everything into better more descriptive areas I'm going to show you some of the tips and tricks that I use to really bring those game pieces to life and make that world feel and sound and smell real to your players. So make sure to tune in on our next one when we're putting the bow on it. Until next time, I hope you have a great time exploring RPGs. Make sure you leave your comment below of where will your adventures take you. Thanks for checking out that video. Hope you enjoyed it. Make sure if you haven't already, please subscribe. Also, if you don't mind getting the notifications, be sure to hit that bell so you can see when we're posting new content.
give us a thumbs up just so we can help reach new audience members, and leave a comment and let us know what you thought of this video just so we can help create better content and better react to what you need. Additionally, here's another video we think you may enjoy. And of course, be sure to hit that subscribe. And of course, please be sure to let us know where will your adventures take you?